Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? I hope you're well. Welcome to this fourth day of the LACNIC uh, uh, event, the second of LACNOC. Uh, today we have a full agenda at LACNOC. We're going to have some technical presentations, some on a range of topics such as XLAN, BGP. There's going to be a bit for everyone, I think. We have Many, many of the speakers were selected by the programs committee, um, chaired by Jorge Vigia. And uh, we're also going to have a keynote presentation by uh, Doug Mallory on uh, uh, BGP failures. We all love to hear how people have uh, problems. So, welcome. Uh, Welcome. Thank you for coming. I hope you had a nice evening yesterday, and I hope you enjoy today's session. So I'm going to ask Fernando Castro to please uh, come here. He's from Edge Uno, and he's going to speak of AS112, contributing to more resilient and efficient internet. Uh, he's uh, currently um, working at Edge Uno, and he has a long career in data center projects. So the floor is yours. A round of applause for him. Good morning, everyone. Well, that's all I can say in Portuguese. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for surviving. Uh, after yesterday's party. So we're going to talk about a project that I'm sure that most of you know. It's the AS-112, the Autonomous System 112. I think that all operators in general should consider sooner or later. You know that one of the most critical infrastructures that we have in the internet is our DNS system in general and everything that has to do with DNS. So as we discussed in other talks at this meeting, we need to be uh, to take care and we need to, to abide by the re, uh, regulations uh, and uh, the security implementations for DNS. And if we don't do that, uh, the infrastructure can uh, uh, suffer and uh, it has a lot of security uh, risks. So many of us working in systems such as DevOps, uh, um, mm, very often the problems uh, are due to DNS. When DNS is failing, the first thing, or when things, sometimes the last thing you check is DNS and you realize that uh, there was a, a DNS problem after looking for problems uh, very, very deep into the system. So it's important to check this system. Now, let me walk through, through AS 112 for the non-technical people, AS 112, uh, let me use an analogy. Just consider that this is a system that is in charge. If you have a telephone central, when there are calls, when there are fake um, or failed uh, telephone calls for numbers that don't exist, they collect all that trash and uh, forward it somewhere and uh, uh, get rid of it. The DNS is very important, especially when the public internet gets uh, there are things uh, that should only be in private uh, networks filter into it. For instance, the BTL registry re records uh, tend to filter to the from the private uh, networks to the public networks and the other way around. So that's very important because we have a number of uh, private IPs that because of poor configuration, because the companies or people decided to use a public authoritative DNSs and they start to filter all these uh, uh, regist uh, re registries or requests. And what uh, AS112 does is to some somehow catch all those uh, negative uh, requests uh, or uh, troublesome and just kill them or get rid of them. And this really 
manages to stop uh, any, I, I wouldn't say malicious traffic, but traffic that is not beneficial. It prevents it from circulating in the internet and uh, saturating the authoritative DNS service of the different companies or the even the root, uh, the DNS root servers. So that's quite important. As you can see here in these graphs, here we have, for instance, types of DNS uh, logs per minute in one of our AS 112 uh, uh, node is uh, capturing in uh, the network, for instance, A or PTR uh, uh, tracks. We have about 60,000 uh, requests per minute, and I think that this gives you an idea of how this traffic could have a negative impact on a number of networks. Here you see a very interesting uh, chart, and it shows you the same. We have thousands of uh, requests per minute of queries of AS-112, and this is purely traffic. It's useless. We don't need it in our networks, and we need uh, to uh, get rid of it to free the network from this, absolutely. So why is it, why is AS-112 important? Well, the most important is reducing unnecessary traffic. We are talking, for instance, in Bogota, we have a node, we have about 60 teras of traffic a month in DNS that goes to AS-112. That's a lot of traffic because we have, and why do we have so much traffic in Bogota? Because we are directly uh, locked to now Colombia, and so the, as a consequence, we have a very uh, significant flow of traffic. Another very important thing is protecting the core of the internet, and that leads me to an issue, to the issue of cooperation that we should seek among all the networks, because deploying these nodes is important for providers like us. We move a lot of traffic, but as we put these nodes uh, to operate uh, in the public network, we are also cooperating with a range of companies and with the health of internet in general, uh, especially for those that have not implemented those nodes. When you read AS-112, the, the, there's a general recommendation that says that most uh, internet providers or network operators should have a node uh, configured in the network. It's not very common for people to do that, and we see how the node operators of AS-112, there are very few in the world because this is a, pro and this is a project that's already quite old. So here we are speaking of IPv6, and you would you would think that this technology this is a, a technology that has been around for some years, but still um, uh, we see that increasingly we see how traffic increases in IPv6 on these nodes. That means that the implementation of authoritative DNS is in so, some networks. Uh, sometimes they are not abiding by the good practices uh, so that uh, traffic continues to filter and that this technology is still needed with our current infrastructure. So now let's uh, uh, discuss uh, the implementation specifically. Uh, this is not uh, just uh, this is not an advertisement, but we have to understand that when you start to grow, we have more than 26 uh, um, uh, uh, st uh, stations with quite uh, uh, heavy traffic. And when we start to analyzing the traffic, we see the need to deploy some infrastructure that would allow us to understand and to capture the DNS traffic uh, or this aspect uh, specifically because there's too much traffic of private networks. One of the important things that AS-112 does 
is uh, uh, using uh, with any cast, it uh, sort of attracts, uh, quote unquote, attracts all of those queries. We are currently implementing it in seven sites. Bogota is the largest one, but the other sites are not uh, lacking uh, behind. Sao Paulo, Istanbul, in Mexico, we have several sites because uh, we have connections in a number of places. So if you visit this link, it's live. And there you can see in real time, you can monitor our AS 112 nodes. And you'll see that it's important for, for the community of AS 112 nodes to have a live monitoring to be able to share it with the community. So we are sharing our data with the community and that might be of use to other operators or other companies if they're willing to traffic the DNS, uh, to, to, to analyze the DNS traffic. That's, that's valuable for the uh, DNS fans in general. So for those of you interested in the technical part as such, the implementation of these nodes is quite simple. You don't need a, a very complex infrastructure to assemble it. It suffices to have a public IPv4, IPv6 address, a VM with two cores, two RAM networks, and 10 gigas of space, uh, disk space, and that would be enough. So we are using BERT as uh, the BGP platform for to do the BGP announcement in our network and an, a Linux OS, although it could run in any OS. Uh, uh, the implementation is quite simple. And if you are interested in the technical part, you can find it there. On, in our website, how to deploy an AS112 node with just two simple steps, and I'll play. And you can do it in five minutes. A very important thing is monitoring, because our you can see this in this link. We use all the Grafana stack, 100% open source. That's important. And uh, the code uh, of the dashboard will also be available if you wish to uh, access. Here, this is a graph um, I'm afraid you can't hear it, but it's there you see um, uh, quite a few gigas in a few weeks uh, in one of the nodes. And this illustrates what the problem is. The problem that we try to solve by implementing AS112 on the networks. So part of what we want to do with this here, this is a call for action that we extend to the community in general, LACNIC, operators, uh, uh, fans, what, and that is, what other type of infrastructure can we deploy in the existing network to contribute to the health of the internet? Because basically, this concept is focused to this uh, to deploying technologies, platforms like AS112, and deploying nodes, ripple uh, uh, sensors, atlas, different probes that may enable us uh, to collectively monitor the network. That's that's of utmost importance because at present we have so-called we have security threats so it's important for the community to coordinate and to be able to share information so on the one hand AS 112 can help for instance to diagnose uh, a DDoS uh, that uh, can attack uh, the DNS, uh, but we can also jointly deploy security scanners and uh, different, I don't know, 
um, uh, to see what's happening in the network, uh, for instance, at what's being discussed at the CCR meetings, and it is to coordinate as a region on th this type of thing that we are doing or that are necessary for the health of the Internet. It would be good to know what sort of things we could deploy. So here, let me add a bit of publicity because from here we could provide you some some infrastructure to entities or to communities willing to implement these uh, nodes in the network. So we are open to assist you with that. So that's short, uh, not too many uh, technical details. If you have any questions or anything, and uh, we are going to open the floor for questions. I'm sorry, but OK. Any questions? Lynch, yes? What's your name? Um, Thomas Lynch. Uh, I don't know anything about uh, DNS, but my question is, how does this system attract, if the explanation is not too long, how do you try attract those requirements, those uh, queries that are invalid or fake? Well, as it is uh, on any cast DNS, or that, that it has all the definitions of private networks that are announced in the network. So these are all the private rec uh, networks that include all those private IPs, and then this is absorbed. And in terms of security, it is the AS operator's responsibility to determine that there is nothing odd with that traffic. So they follow the instructions for monitoring this. So this would be within your own network, yes. So you can set this up privately, but also, ideally, this should be public available to contribute to the ecosystem in general. I came here because I have a question. Please get closer to the microphone, Carlos. So, my question is, I think I know the answer, but it would be good if you could comment on this for the rest of the participant. I understand that you use AS112 because you use the autonomous system 112. What are you announcing? What are the prefixes you're announcing? I announce all the private network prefixes that are defined in the RFC uh, standard for private networks, IPv4, for IPv4 and for IPv6. And now, as was asked, you mentioned uh, Ansible playbook to announce this. That playbook is this available in GitHub or in some sites such as those, so that it could be used by others. Maybe this could serve as an idea. Yes, that is precisely what you The playbook will be available in our GitHub of Edge One, and we are fine-tuning things so this can be used by anyone. You can just deploy a public SSH key in a Linux server, maybe based on Debian or Ubuntu, and with a couple of parameters like public IPs and so on, you can deploy this. It's quite standard. So, for example, the DNS service for that we use bind, and everything is quite standard. So it's just about announcing the private networks and the DNS configuration of the BGP connection is quite simple, it's quite straightforward. You announce the AS112 and you say what your AS is, and that is it. Great. Any more questions? Any online questions? So a big round of applause to Fernando.